The tech industry for software developers is moving at a lightning speed, and the future feels more uncertain than ever right now. There is a lot of noise out there, people saying that AI is taking all the jobs, coding is dead, and everything is being outsourced. It will destroy employment in some areas. But how much of that is actually true? I've been working as a software engineer in the tech industry for the last eight years, and today I wanna give you my take on some misconceptions surrounding tech right now. I did a similar video in the past that lots of you liked, but this one is even more relevant to the current landscape, so if you're interested, please keep watching. Myth. AI will make engineers obsolete. Remember when Mark Zuckerberg said that by the end of this year, all of Meta's mid-level engineers are going to be replaced by artificial intelligence? This is the same guy that spent the equivalent of the total value of a Fortune 500 company on the metaverse, which by some accounts have less than a thousand users at any given time. The same people that are the most vocal and confident about AI replacing engineers either stand to benefit from all of the AI hype or have a product to sell you. This perception that AI will soon replace engineers only benefits companies because it generates fear among engineers that they will soon be replaced and it gives employers more leverage in today's job market. And by all accounts, it seems to be working. But actual software engineers with years of experience know that AI is just a tool that can automate some of the more repetitive tasks, but it really can't do the thinking for you. From personal experience, I noticed that AI is really good at solving well-defined specific problems. All of the impressive AI demos show that AI tools are really good at making prototypes and building relatively simple applications from scratch. But the bottleneck isn't always writing the code. The hardest part of building software is often breaking down vague, nebulous business objectives and customer problems into specific steps and fitting them into a legacy code base. For example, years ago at work, we wanted to implement implement a simple text editor into our website builder app. We went back and forth for weeks trying to decide, do we build this tool in-house or use a third-party tool? On top of that, we dug into how to make it all fit seamlessly into our existing app without messing up current features or confusing our non-technical users. This sort of thing makes up a big chunk of my job and the more AI takes over this busy work, the more software engineers will be expected to do this kind of complex problem solving. This isn't to say that AI will have no impact on the job market. In fact, I think it's going to raise the bar of what is expected from junior engineers. But as of today, lots of the AI coding tools hyped up to replace software engineers haven't really lived up to their massive expectations. Myth. High pay means poor work-life balance. Actually, throughout my career, the more that I've been paid, the better the working environment was. In fact, I've even heard of people saying that they don't want to work at big tech companies because they assume that the high salaries mean they're going to work longer hours. In my experience, at least, this hasn't really been true. Work-life balance varies widely by team and company, but it doesn't really correlate with salary. In fact, the worst work-life balance I've seen are these web development agencies paying below market rates. A better way to gauge work culture and environment would probably be to directly talk to someone who works there or check out reviews on Blind, but neither method is truly foolproof. Also, if you're looking for an easy way to showcase your portfolio or you want to build a personal website but you don't have days to spend on the design of the page, I suggest you check out this free drag and drop website builder from HubSpot. With this new tool, you won't need to agonize over where to start and how to make it look amazing because you can get started with over a hundred high quality free themes. Additionally, each theme can be fully customized with no paywall limitations so you can edit things like modules and styles. I love how their themes are mobile friendly and professional looking right out of the box so you don't need to stress about how your page looks on different screen sizes and devices. They also have their AI tool built into the app so you can simply highlight the text you want rewritten and just get ideas pasted directly into the page. For my previous websites, I've used hosts that didn't have these options at all or charged you extra for them. This free tool from HubSpot helps you make a stunning personal website quickly. And also, you can add your own custom domain for free so you can go from zero to launch in almost no time at all. This is a great website builder and I recommend you check it out by clicking the link in the description. Thank you HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Myth. The job market is dead for software engineers. 
Going into computer science is no longer an infinite money glitch. You actually need to be pretty good and the good jobs are competitive like other white collar jobs. And while it's nowhere near what it was like in say 2021, it's also not a dying field as the doomers would make it seem. The US Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates that there will be a 17% increase in the number of software jobs between 2023 and 2033, which is much higher than the baseline for all professions at 4%. Also, the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs report names software developers as the third top growing job by 2030. So no, the future is not all doom and gloom. But you're probably thinking, all of these projections or predictions don't account for the fact that we're in a trade war right now, we don't know how the tariffs are going to affect the economy, and there might be a global recession. Also, while AI isn't good enough to replace us now, the advancements might displace a lot of us eventually when it gets even better. As always, nobody really knows what's going to happen in the future. The lack of junior engineer hiring today could very well mean a shortage of senior talent five years down the line. And maybe companies will even have to hire more engineers because they need to clean up all the AI generated crap that's being pumped out these days. As of April 2025, according to TrueUp, a job board, tech job openings are up 43% since the low point in November 2023. And there still climbing. Anecdotally, the people in my network who were looking for jobs over the last few months did find them eventually. It just took a little bit longer. So if you have the means to just hang in there and just stick it out through this tough job market, I think you will see a light at the end of this tunnel and it will eventually get better. Myth. Day-to-day -day life is just like day-in-the-life videos. An average day is just like one of those day-in-the-life videos. If you're not happy with your job, or even if you are, it can be pretty hard to watch some of those day-in-the-life videos of 20-something software engineers working in their fancy tech offices with free food. You see them strolling in at 10 a.m., go to a couple meetings, and then call it a day while making supposedly a quarter million dollars. Sometimes I wonder how many people signed up for a coding bootcamp right after watching one of those TikToks. I don't think those content creators are intentionally lying to you because I've definitely had those days too where you don't have much to do because you're waiting for the next project to start. Um, but those days aren't exactly typical. And let's be honest, it's a lot more interesting to get a tour of the beautiful offices or free buffets rather than just watch someone stare at a computer the entire time. As content creators, they have an incentive to portray an aspirational lifestyle for engagement. But what isn't always shown is having to get up at three in the morning for the second time in a row, dealing with an alarm that you don't have no idea how to solve because you're on call or dealing with another passive aggressive email from your project manager or being stressed out because your unit tests aren't passing and you don't know why and no one has any time to help you. Myth. The main goal is always to create the highest quality software possible. I heard a rumor that one of the reasons why Apple intelligence was so underwhelming when it launched was because they rushed to ship faster in order to beat other competitors in this AI craze. It's interesting because in school, we were taught that the main goal was to write the best possible code. But once you enter the workforce, the main goal is to solve business problems with software software, not necessarily to write the best code possible. Ideally, those goals overlap, but there are times when it doesn't. Sometimes it means sacrificing quality in the name of speed, and this doesn't mean we're being lazy. For example, one of the worst things you can do at a startup is to spend months or even years building the most optimized future-proof solution only to launch and realize that there is no demand for the product. It makes a lot more sense to just spend days or maybe weeks making a quick prototype to see if there is even demand in this feature or product before investing time in engineering a more robust future-proof piece of code. I'm definitely not saying that quality doesn't matter or that tech debt won't eventually be a big business problem. But there are absolutely times when a company simply needs to save money in the short term. Maybe they're running out of runway or they need to get a product out to market faster than their competitors and they will put speed as a higher priority over quality. I wish I knew this as a junior, but it's always a good idea to keep in mind what the top priority is of the team and the company in any particular time. Myth. 
you're always going to be building things from scratch. Given how all the classes you take in a CS program or a coding bootcamp revolve around algorithms, software engineering, or math, you might think that most of your time as a software engineer is spent building cool new features or implementing beautiful interfaces from scratch. For some of you very lucky ones, this might be the case. I was talking to someone who worked at Amazon and one of his projects was using Dijkstra's algorithm to optimize the route for their delivery drivers. The truth is, most of the time when you join a new company, you're not starting a project from scratch. You're probably going to be assigned to a large legacy code base and most of your time is spent trying to familiarize yourself with it, fixing bugs or updating dependencies. And if you're not doing that, you might be conducting code reviews or reading documentation. In fact, as a junior or mid-level engineer, I'd say approximately like half your time is actually spent writing code and this portion becomes smaller the further you progress in your career. Myth, front end is easier than back end. This is mostly a myth propagated by back-end engineers that want to gatekeep what a real engineer is. As someone who's worked in both front-end and back-end, I can tell you that you really can't make those sweeping generalizations, especially if they're so completely untrue. I was recently part of a team that worked on the UI of a WYSIWYG website builder like Squarespace, and that was infinitely more complex than any backend work I've ever done. We were building a feature to let users build reusable components, for example, a footer, and just the sheer amount of things and variables we had to consider was overwhelming. For example, what happens if the user hits undo, redo? What happens to unsave changes and version control? How do we make this backwards compatible? How do we make it clear to users that they're editing a reusable component as opposed to a regular component without confusing the heck out of them? And how do we build this so that it's easy to use and understand by non-technical people? When I took a break from front end to spend two weeks working on the Express backend, it honestly felt like I took a mental vacation from work. With front-end development, there are also a ton of environments that your code can be run from that you need to consider, like different screen sizes, devices, and browsers. While front-end web development might be easier for beginners to get started in, it's absolutely not the case that it's overall simpler or less demanding than back-end work. Myth you need to be talented in order to be a software engineer. I wish I didn't spend so much time worrying about whether or not I had what it took to work in tech. When you see coworkers or classmates understand certain concepts faster than you, you start to question if you even have the raw intelligence to keep up. This might be my most controversial take, but in my opinion, you don't need that much natural talent in order to get and maintain an average software job. Sure, if you wanna work at the big tech companies, you'll need to be able to solve coding challenges under pressure within time limits. And this takes some natural interest or inclinations towards solving logic problems. But the people that I see get promoted the most often aren't these geniuses who code compilers in their free time. Once you've reached a baseline level of technical skill, what matters a lot more is how easy you are to work with and your willingness to go out with your coworkers for after work drinks on a Friday. That's all I have for you guys today. Let me know which of these resonated with you and also what you really disagreed with. And if you liked this video, you might like the one I did a few months ago on the biggest lies in the tech industry. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.